Hello coders, this is Jared from Renaissance Coders and today we are going to learn about variables and data types in JavaScript. Declaring a variable in JavaScript is really easy to do. All you have to do is use the var keyword and then name your variable. So let's create a new variable called test by typing in var test and then a semicolon. Variable names in JavaScript cannot start with a number must only contain letters, numbers, and underscores, and cannot be a reserved word. When we create a variable that is not set to a value, then the variable will be a data type of undefined. To create a variable that contains a string like someone's name, we can create a new variable called first name with no spaces and a capital N, and set this variable to your name surrounded by quotations and finish off the statement with a semicolon. If we want to create a variable that is a number, then we just create a variable called my number, again with a no spaces and a capital N, and set it to any number. Make sure to not enclose the number in quotations, because if you do, then the number will be a string instead of a number. You can declare a variable without using the var keyword. This is called an implicit declaration. Let's try this out by typing last name and setting it equal to your last name as a string. One thing that you cannot do is use a variable that has not been declared. Of course, this makes perfect sense, right? The point here is to always make sure that we declare our variables before trying to use them. JavaScript is a loosely typed language, which means that variables don't have a predetermined type, as we just saw the variable's type is based on its value. Now, loosely typed languages have benefits and weaknesses, and some things that fall in between. One of those in-between items is type coercion. Type coercion occurs when comparing variables of different data types or combining variables of different data types. Here's a quick example. Let's say that we have a variable my string and set it equal to this is a string. Now let's create another variable called any number and set it to the number 10. If we now set my string equal to my string plus any number, what do you think the result will be? In a strongly typed language, this would result in an error because we are adding a number to a string but in JavaScript and other loosely typed languages, the number is converted to a string, so my string would now be equal to the string. This is a string 10. Now, there are benefits to type coercion as well, but we will do a deep dive into type coercion later. Now, let's take a quick look at variable scope in JavaScript. There are only two types of variable scope in JavaScript, and that is global scope and local scope. So what does scope mean? The scope of a variable is essentially the portion of the program that can see and use the variable. A globally defined variable will be accessible anywhere in the program, while a locally defined variable will only be visible or accessible within the function that it is defined. An important note is that function parameters are always locally scoped. So based on these definitions, all of the variables that we've created are global variables because they are not defined within a function. So let's go ahead and create a function with a variable inside as an example. To do this, we simply type function and then give our function a name, like name check. Next, we want the function to take in two parameters, so we call these parameters name1 and name2. The next step is to open up our curly braces and define our new variable. Our local variable here will be called full name and let's set it equal to name1 plus name2. Make sure you put in your semicolon and close your curly braces. Now, when we call this function, all it is going to do is combine the parameters together, so let's do this now. We call our function by writing name check, open parentheses, first name, comma, last name, close parentheses, and add the semicolon. In this example, the variables name1, name2, and full name are examples of locally scoped variables, while first name and last name are examples of globally scoped variables. Okay, 
That is going to cover our introduction to variables in JavaScript. Our next JavaScript tutorial will cover data types for JavaScript. Be sure to subscribe for more great tutorials, and thanks for watching. This has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial.